fire skill you're about to see is one we consider to be essential, but we also consider it to be underrated, under-discussed, and certainly underutilized. Our goal with this video is to change all that. Fire carriers give quick, reliable fires in the cold and rain, major convenience when you need a fire in the poor light, and a great sense of security knowing that you've already got a fire made that can literally last all day. We're going to show you the value in being able to make one fire one time and then just take it with you. Now that is a skill we all should carry. There's a lot of hard work happening out here in the wild. Looks like it's time we get back to work with another project. But first, we're going to need some tools. Now here's some of our primitive tools that we brought along to make our fire carriers. This is a deer bone reed and bark splitter. It's rounded with some hardened pitch to make a good grip for the handle. This is a stone axe ground sharp on an abrading stone and tied onto a handle with cedar roots. Here's an elk horn dagger or wedge chopped out and shaped with a stone. It works great for debarking trees. This is a jasper chisel that's set in a yew wood handle tied with a cedar limb and it's got an abalone inlay. An elk bone chisel and a deer antler maul. Here's another stone axe and it's set in an ocean spray handle and wrapped with rawhide. Now we're going to use cedar to make our first couple of carriers, but they can be made out of a variety of materials as we'll show later on. We found a dead cedar that we're going to use to make thicker and longer sections of the bark to make some of our fire carriers. We start by just using a light stone axe and then following it up with our elk horn chisel. We just want to get a good start here on the bark so that we can start peeling. Our elk horn dagger wedge did an amazing job taking the bark off the tree. This jasper chisel also worked really well for prying the bark away from the tree, good enough to get a good hold on it for stripping. Okay, here we're using the reed and bark splitter to get to the inner bark and get it off the tree in a nice clean strips. Our dagger wedge worked the best for taking the bark off the tree. Extra point it has sticking out of it was great for added leverage in pushing it through the bark. This is a different live cedar tree and we wanted to make the point that you can pull the bark right off of a living tree by hand to make a fire carrier. Okay, here we got to separate the layers of the dead bark so it'll be thinner and easier to work up into quality tinder strips. We really got to focus on processing the bark to make it good for holding a smoldering ember. Now you can make your fire carrier in different thicknesses. The thicker they are, the better they're going to hold an ember. We're going to call this one an average or standard size carrier. Thinner than this and it's going to take a watchful eye to keep it going. Now when the length you prepared for wrapping the carrier runs out, our technique of overlapping each length will make it unnecessary to tie any knots while you wrap, except at the very end. This technique will be very helpful also in the last stage of making the fire carrier, which you'll see later. Okay, this carrier might look done, but we want to prevent it from flaming up as much as possible. To do that, we're going to use green grass or ferns or anything growing green to wrap it. When it's wrapped onto the outside, it keeps the ember from flaming up like a torch and burning up in the carrier too quickly. Okay, we want to show that wrapping technique again. Now, after wrapping to the end of the length of grass, you're going to overlap the end with the beginning of the next batch of grass. And after going around it, the first wrap, you then let that length overlap itself, and then you continue on down the carrier. You can choose to tie the very end of the grass down with a length of bark if a half hitch of grass doesn't secure it well enough. One layer of green material should be sufficient for any fire carrier, but we're going to go ahead and go the extra mile with some sword ferns just to show how they can also be used for wrapping. Here's some lady ferns that we're putting on a different carrier for a first wrapping. And then again, some sword ferns as a second wrapping just for demonstration. We like to make a cord for our carriers for convenience sake. This cord here was made from willow bark. The cord allows us to tie our carrier to our belt, throw it over our shoulder, or just hang it up on a limb while we duck under a branch or log. We've been asked a time or two about fire safety and how we keep from setting our clothes on fire. Well, these carriers don't burn like torches. 
After only a little time, they smolder deep down inside the green wrapping, even to the point where they appear to have gone out completely. We certainly keep an eye on them while they're tied to us, especially in windy conditions, but we've been carrying them on us for decades now without incident. Okay, we're going to make a different kind of carrier now, one that doesn't even need to be wrapped. We consider this to be a quick carrier, something that can quickly be made up if we're in a rush. First, we need to score the bark so it can be bent around the tinder without breaking. And then we're going to simply put our lengths of cedar tinder inside the bark carrier. We'll tie it right in the middle, and we're going to keep the tie far enough away from the end so it doesn't burn. Now this is another kind of wrapping for a fire carrier. It's green willow bark. and We're going to use this for our next carrier, which may be the most interesting carrier of all. We use a brown jasper stone for cutting the bark and getting the bark off the willow. Now we told you earlier that you can use a variety of smoldering materials for these carriers, and this is the ultimate proof. This is just a hodgepodge of stuff from the wild, all of which will do a great job smoldering in this next carrier we make. This is just a debris pile uh, made from leaves, maple leaves, moss, cottonwood bark, maple bark, things you might find underneath a big tree or under a log. Now, in order to make a good carrier out of the debris pile, we need to add a little bit of structure to it to keep it all from falling apart. In this case, we're just going to use some old nettle stocks, but you can also use some small twigs or branches like the Douglas fir twigs that we used in our fire in the rain video. These nettle stocks will work well in holding things together when wrapped with willow bark. You can see here how we wrap the end of a length and then begin a new one. We simply put a half hitch or two on the very end of the carrier, and it is done. Now we're going to do the same thing using just the old stinging nettle stocks for a fire carrier. This is an obsidian saw or knife that we're going to use to trim the end of the nettles. Now, as much fun as it's been making these four carriers, the fun isn't even close to over. I mean, we still need to find and break material for starting our flint and steel fires, making the fires without any charred material, using only natural materials straight from the wild, ignite our carriers, and then put them through a series of brutal punishing tests to demonstrate their longevity and crazy durability. All of that is coming up in the next video. Make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell on so you don't miss when the next video posts. Also, if you're enjoying this, let us know in the comments and hit the like button. All of that supports our channel in a major way. It helps us keep the content rolling. Thanks for watching.